Sasquatch, also known as Bigfoot or Grassman. In the South, it's referred to as Skunk Ape or Wood Booger. And across the globe, Yeti, Yowie, and Yaren, to name a few. Every Native American tribe has a name for the beast. Some as endearing as Big Brother, or as ominous as Boss of the Mountain. They've been depicted on the walls of caves for thousands of years. In 986 AD, Leif Erikson, after landing on the shores of what is now North America, wrote of being attacked by hairy black-eyed giants. To date, there are over 11,000 reported sightings of these creatures worldwide. There is an abundance of physical, empirical, and anecdotal evidence of the existence of these seemingly human primates, yet it is still considered a myth. Our focus is not to research or try to prove Bigfoot exists, but to highlight the men and women whose lives have been changed by these creatures. Joined by my wife and co-host Linda, we will travel the country interviewing, taking expedition, and visiting the locations where their life-altering journey began, opening the door and bringing to you their means, observations, and interactions with the man-like beast known as Bigfoot. I'm Kerry Arnold, and this is Bigfoot Odyssey. On this episode of Bigfoot Odyssey, we're in sunny South Florida. We're here with Mr. Richard Borchardt. Now, Richard's Bigfoot Odyssey began when he was just a kid growing up in New York City. Between Patterson Gimlin, In Search Of, and whatever else his mother could find on the paranormal or any other fringe subject, Bigfoot always interested him most. But with no green belts or real woods to speak of to explore, it wasn't until he moved to South Florida till he would get the chance to see if his theories and beliefs were valid. Richard doesn't seek any notoriety or any means to prove Bigfoot exists. Richard's Bigfoot Odyssey is his own. He researches by himself, and we're very fortunate to have him share some of the best video evidence I've ever seen of these very elusive creatures. Hope y'all enjoy the show. Richard Borchardt, yes, sir. it is great to be back here with you, man. It's great to have you. I was, uh, I was a little disappointed the last time we came and we got we shot the video, we did the field stuff, and I get home and I can't hear it. I'm like, there's something wrong with my computer. And then I realized we didn't record any audio. So I think it, I think it's gonna work out a little bit better. And before we get started, before anybody makes a comment about me wearing a hat, um, <laughs> I said I was not gonna wear the hat. But someone said I looked like uh, Diamond Dallas Page. And then someone else that looked like Kane Hoder. And if you don't know who those people are, look them up. They look like each other, so it must be true. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not taking my hat off. Sorry. It's just <laughs> gonna be a, it's just gonna be a thing. You can't see my face. You're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> but all right. You've been interested in Sasquatch for since you were a kid, right? That's right. And your mom kind of got you started in this, right? That's right. Tell us about that. Well, we used to watch uh, a lot of documentaries um, in search of things like that about Sasquatch, and you know, I'm, uh, I found it very interesting and very odd on how a relic human hominid would survive if there were only a few. So I figured that had to be a little cluster, maybe, or something. But they always said it was like in the Pacific Northwest somewhere. Well, see, so you're smarter than most of us. Because we all figured there's one walking around, you know, and there's one, he's going from place to place. I mean, that's the common yeah. consensus it is. Yeah, I figured it had to be more than one because it, it seemed grown. It wasn't young, it wasn't old, it was like grown to the point where it was just at that point, you know, where it had to have, and it's a female. I mean, you know, you remember Patty, I was like, you know, come on, if there's a female, it has to be a male, it has to be young. So all my life I kept uh, looking into it, reading books on it, and whatever I could find, because back then, you know, from we're talking the 70s and 80s, there wasn't much on it. Then when it came to the 90s with the internet, I started looking things up and looking for pictures and and video and whatever you know I could find on it. And then eventually, I got out into the field. Well, you have um, a research area that is 
that's some of the best pictures I've ever seen. I mean, it's, it's stills from video, but, and I have all this stuff, and everyone's gonna get to see, you know, exactly what I'm talking about. But it's just, and you, you haven't seen any of these. You just kind of, you, you have a GoPro on the end of a... Oh uh, yeah, I have a few cameras, cameras, but I've seen them. You have seen them? Uh, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I mean, there's so much going on, and they live so clustered together that you're not through hearing something over here and trying to find out what's over there before you hear something over here and have to go over here. And I mean, yeah, and that particular video that I, that I uh, shot, um, there's some in this den, and then they moved across to a middle section where there was no den, and then there's another den just to the, what would be the right of that and they were hiding in the shadow. So I took a snapshot of that video and I could highlight it and you could see them all clustered there. But they, they're very silent. But I heard something breaking little sticks in there. And I'm standing still, so as I moved more to the right, they were following me and then that's when I noticed, you know, I'm trying to keep an ear and an eye out this way uh, because that's where I'm hearing them from and that's where they were hiding. And then now let's take a look at one of these that Richard got a chance to see. He said this little guy just popped his head right up there. Well, I don't know if it's a little guy or not, but if you can't see it, there he is. Now, not all of them, but some of them appear to have that heavy brow ridge and the nose is like almost right between the eyes. You're, uh, you're gonna get to see that on quite a few of these. So when I caught a glimpse of that, and I'm worried about what's over here, plus the other animals that are out in my research area, you know, keeps my head on a swivel. Right. So I caught a little shot of her, and then a male bent over behind her, covering his face, and then several others in the backdrop. And then um, I quickly saw through the corner of my eye, a big female, seven foot tall, staring at me through the bush, right here, right the distance between you and I. So I quickly caught a shot of her twice, and then went, you know, then I, then I continued to walk on. But there... Uh, this is a still from that video with the eye. You can see there some of the brow ridge, and if you can't see it, there's a little help. But like he said, that is four feet away. Now, this man goes out and does this by himself. But they're, they're so just, you don't stay too long. I try my best not to. She gave me the real stink eye. <laughs> yeah, she. But she just kept doing that. what. She, you can yeah, see that yeah, she just kept doing what she was doing, even though she looked and kind of sneered at me. But you know, she just kept, females seem to be that way. They, they don't particularly care about stealth, or about you know, if you see them, they well, just. Well, they're probably right the protectors. I, mm -hmm. I imagine they're the ones with the babies. You know. But they come and bring the babies out. It, it's like they stand right there. The males are the ones that sneak around and they're more curious and, uh, but the females, they'll be curious, but they just don't, they don't care about hiding. They don't care about stealth. Uh, I think that's what it is. Well, I know some of the, that's all apparent. Uh, they'll have their face, but you, I know you have a photo of, it's a full body <laughs> shot and you can see it perfectly clear and she's hiding her face. Mm -hmm. A bush or something right there in front of the face and you can see the rest. Now this is the image I'm talking about, and you can see that one to the right there. Uh, Richard has done these enhancements. Um, it hiding its face, you see its left shoulder, you can see its brow ridge, eyes, you can see the ear, conical shaped head, and you can see the small one down on the left pretty well as also. Well, this is South Florida, and uh, that's not a chimpanzee. That's a skunk ape. Right. You, yeah, you I bring the treats, yes. Now, tell us the Tupperware story. Okay, this, this is the area here. This is the den area that I came to where the Tupperware incident happened, where I was walking along here trying to peer in, and but it was a lot more bushy then. Um, and then something smacked down the, uh, the, um, the leaves onto the ground, and I backed out, you know, drawing my weapon thinking something was coming running out of there, but I, you could clearly hear the smack on the leaves before they fall. Um, and then I decided that being that I wasn't uh, coming to this area, um, I was new to the area, they probably didn't know me, so I figured I'll, I'll leave them something, let them know that I come in, you know, in friendly 
uh, for yeah. friendly reasons. Um, as a beneficiary, I mean a benefit. So, um, as you can see there, there's one of the Tupperware tops, but that's not the one that was taken and returned. When I came here, I only showed them, now this is how, how exact they are. I only showed them with the big blue one. So that was the what only one. What did you one. show them? I mean, I, 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 I mimed out that this belongs to me. Like I care about this. So you had you had a Tupperware and you had food in it, right? With uh, boneless pork chops and and uh, uh, mild Italian sausage, all raw, and cheeses and cheeses and the other things were in those. But um, how I mimed it out was that I I I coddled it like it was my baby. This belongs to me. This belongs to me. Um, you could open this up and you could eat. Mmm, good. You could eat. And I just kept miming it. And I said, I want it put right here. Right here on this spot. Right here. But I didn't say that for the red ones. <laughs> so they were very specific. They took my they took my my uh, orders to the word. This belongs to me. Put this here. I want this left here. And I'm telling you, for two and a half months, coming out here every week, uh, more than every week, twice a week I would come out here refill it put it back and it would be here waiting for me clean licked clean with the top on it whether it was upside down or right side up the top would be where the top goes not sealed but at least it was where it should go right um, I found that amazing and I learned that from another research they didn't bring the red lids back they didn't bring the red anything back, only the lids were found there. So they, obviously they, they just said, well, you didn't care about these, so we're taking these. <laughs> but, um, and after uh, two and a half months, um, I found it in there on one of the trails, because this, this, this was more dense, and the trails separated, going, one going one way, another one going the other way. I found it right there at the beginning of that trail going this way, but it was chewed up. So I went in there, I thought it was gonna be a trap. Like they were luring me into the trap. But I said to hell with it. You know, I'm gonna go see what, it, you know, what it looks like. Why is it in there? Because normally it's left out here. So I went in there and I saw it was chewed up all around the edges. So they decided not to even put it back out here. And um, it was with something with pointy teeth. It looked like small pointy teeth. So it might have been, could have been a bobcat. It could have been raccoon or something, but. but that you know. wasn't on there every time. That just, no, that just no, it was pristine every time. And I'm talking about licked clean licked clean now this I had to stop and film because it's just a few feet down from where the the Tupperware incident happened and it's almost like a marker that's two broken sticks from a different tree put up in that tree on the edge and there's no tree around for that thing to fall out but it's in you can see it's in the shape of an X plus there's another broken limb on the inside and then just a few feet in you see this tree break where it's broken off about five feet up but like I said that's just a few feet down from the gifting area so I don't know if this is some kind of marker or it's just it's not natural you can almost tell that that's just not natural and I, I remember hearing it sounded like tree falling down and I, I remember asking you what in the hell was that and I remember when I was on the phone with you right and you were walking out and you were just about in this area yeah right here I was coming through this area and I, I remember you telling me that you could hear what sounded like an owl yes but it was on the ground it wasn't like up in the it tree. was actually ear level but pacing but you, you I remember you asking me do owls get sick or something? Because it, it wasn't exactly sound like an right. owl. It was more like somebody uh, trying to sound like, like, an, like a guy right. trying to sound like an owl. Right. Like you were walking out this way and it's dark. And I know you're shining your light and you're, you're hearing this. Yes. And I'm on the phone with you. And it paced me it's quite a ways until just about here. And then it started, it started staying back there until it stopped. And then when I'm still talking to you on the phone, I was maybe up this area just about right here where you're smelling what do you, whatever you smell right now. Yeah, it's a strong smell. It's skunky. Just when I get here to this area, which you can see a path right here. So I'm, I'm just assuming now that this ends this area 
and this begins this new one. Okay. So as I'm talking to you and I'm not paying attention, and I'm still looking back for the owl sound, I'm shining the light a little high. Usually I shine it down there at the bottom, you know, to make sure no wild hogs or anything. That's the only thing really I'm worried about uh, coming out, and the Black Panthers, of course, uh, coming out of here. And I raised the light a little too high, and that must have made something very angry, and it started crashing through, and I uh, through the through the trees. And I, I remember hearing it. Yeah, I think I, I said, "What in the hell is that?" Because it was like I, I thought you might have stepped on a bush or something. I'm out here. Where, I'm out I didn't here. know this. you were out here. I thought you were tromping through the woods. Oh you know? no, I was trying to get out. I was because I was way down in research area four, and right. all like trying to work my way back, and. I heard it. It was loud. Yeah. And then you said something. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. But. You said I heard. I heard that. And I said I know you damn well did. <laughs> I heard it too. And I, I drew my weapon because I didn't know what was. You know. I I know none of the other animals are gonna crash through the through the trees. No. Not you know, No. No. They're not crashing through anything. Especially not hogs. Breaking come limbs. Running. And, yeah. I mean that that was loud. It was a lot of crackling. It was loud. I heard it on the phone. And you were way up here. Get from feet just to the edge, and then you can say it's a yeah, farther just in. maybe a few feet in, like not really like that deep in there. It was just right around there because you heard the cracking. I heard it. Yeah, you'll see it on the video. You'll you'll hear it even more. I mean, it's just it's right here. So I think this area is separated from this area because you smell that skunky area over here. When right. we go this way, you won't smell it as much in this immediate area because they they can stay further back in there. But well, I think they live right where I feel. They live where I'm at. Right. Well, to me, and this smell, I want to describe this smell. Because it's not like just a skunk. It's not like just that musk. It's like dirty. It's a dirty. I, I can see, if that's them, I can see why they call them skunk ape. Because it doesn't smell exactly like a skunk, but it has that signature. It just smells a little more dirty, filthy hard to explain so as I'm talking to you on the phone and this is like one of the largest brainstorms that I had to bring a flashlight with me finally I didn't know I was gonna come out of there late but normally when I get out of there late I'll um, I'll out of desperation I'll take flash photography at the at the bush to blind anything that might try to come out because I can't see anything it's black in there. Yeah. yeah so I'm First time genius, I bring the flashlight with me and I'm shining it. I'm trying not to shine it too high, like usually at the corner between the, the grass and the, the, the bottom of the tree line. And I'm talking to you on the phone and I get distracted and I'm raising it up too high and something got pissed off. It started just breaking through. It sounded like a pickup truck just barreling through the trees. It didn't do it far, but it did it along pacing me, and that that was really scary. You just shine the light on them, I guess. Huh? They yeah, like I, they do not like light, and they don't like when you put anything in front of your face. That's the only problem I have with a lot of people. They're they're pretty critical of things. You know, I can understand you have doubts. You know, things come out blurry. Um, they're not going to come out clear. But yeah, in my situation, or probably everybody's situation, you have to keep it on uh, uh, auto focus. Because by the right. time, if you put anything in front of your face, they're gone. They're not even waiting around. They're going to duck. You'll never see them again. And you're not going to go up to them. So. Well, you do have some stuff that's clear. Yeah. But the stuff that you put out that isn't so clear, I still take it for what it is. What you tell me it is because you're there. I'm there. I'm there. Yeah. And I I'm see not these there. guys. Right. I've been surrounded seven times. Now, what's nice about it is, is that they don't completely surround you. Which is kind of nice. I think they are super intelligent, man. We just think about that Tupperware thing and what it takes for something to understand you miming something. Two totally different species. You're miming it, and they're understanding and bringing it back, knowing that you know to leave it right where I tell them to leave it. So they they figure, okay, well, you know, we'll see what they because their thing is curiosity. They're really curious about us and I guess what we look like and how we act. So seven times out of all the time I've been out there, I've been surrounded. And they leave at least one, you, the way you came in, they leave that open for you to get the hell back out. But they don't, they haven't been aggressive like how other people have, you know, 
said that they've been aggressive to them, throwing rocks, pushing trees over at them. Well, yelling. You, you don't go in there aggressively. No, I don't. Do I go in there. I let them know I'm coming. I talk. And you do this, just you, you treat it as a hobby. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're this That's is, what is this is pure interest. That's it. Because a lot of people that research, you know, for lack of a better word, there's an end game or there's a goal, mm -hmm. you know, validation or. And this, this is, you just want to get to know these things, right? And know yeah. what they are, what right. they do, and they right. obviously know who you are. I mean, I know they're intelligent, but uh, like I said before, um, which probably nobody heard, they're unlike any other Aboriginal uh, family or tribe or anything that they just want to stay away from humans and obviously. they just want to be to themselves. I mean, they're Aboriginal people in some way. Because I, they I act just like that. people. I mean, they, they're just um, like another people, but different. Now, this is one of the dens that stretches way back. Now, I haven't been all the way back, but from here, I caught a shot of Goliath, which you'll see in the video, um, peeking out from back there. He's humongous. Now, you now, this is the image of the one that Richard calls Goliath. Now, I call him the Hulk. But you can see... Now, to me, this clearly illustrates why we say they're human. There's very little that's ape about this thing at all. Now, it looks kind of caveman, but, and if you don't see him yet, you, you soon will. His face is green. Now, his face isn't actually green. His skin is gray but I don't know if they have some kind of oil on their skin or whatever, but when they get up next to something green or black or brown, their face reflects that color in the sun. And to me, that's just perfect camouflage. And it's also what makes these things so hard to see, even when you're, you're right there among them, you know, they're just, you can't see them that and the fact that they just don't move but if you haven't seen him yet he is right there center screen you can see his outline you can see that caveman looking face and again i don't know if it's that region but you see that long upper lip heavy brow ridge you see his ear and that nose just shoved right up there almost right between his eyes but it's not very pretty and if you still don't see this We'll go ahead and do some enhancement. Now that is the face of a Sasquatch. A Florida skunk ape. Now they don't all look the same, just like you and I don't look the same. But that looks human to me. And I've said that, and that's probably why they're not validated. Hmm. Oh yeah, I'm sure that's the, the reason is that they, the government can't do anything about them. There's too many of them. And, so, and you know, I reading the Miller document, I, I kind of think that that was an accurate and true document, only because uh, we find them mostly in, in uh, uh, animal, you know, wildlife uh, preserves and... Right. Um, National forests. Yep. Yeah. And, and the way they, that they were described and how the government was going to funnel them into the wildlife preserves is where we find them and then overflowing out to everywhere else. Yeah, well they're populating, they're, they're getting yeah. more so, and I more. I mean, um, I, don't, I don't quite understand the, the uh, name that Dr. H. A. Miller gave them, uh, Dable a Day or whatever the name is. It, that kind of more refers to a monkey. Right. But, you know, they're, they're more like split down the middle. I mean, they're upright walking, they have the same shaped feet we have, hooded noses, I mean they have a language, I mean they, they pretty much are us except just reversed. You know like instead like people that, uh, and uh, you're a nurse so you would know about the R factor in mm -hmm. the blood, Right. Uh, you know that means that you have uh, rhesus monkey genes, you know if you have a positive blood type. So theirs is probably the same they have human genes, but they're monkey, you know, more like, you know, some people say howling monkey or uh, lemur. 
Right. Um, we've heard that. Yeah. From so the Melbourne Catching Study. Right. Right. <clears throat> so I mean, and uh, they do do those howls and things, but I don't hear them. I've never heard any. I've only heard one vocalization, but that was somewhere else. Well, you would think that it would not be very advantageous for them to just go out hollering and screaming through where they are. Right. Because, I mean, this is a series of canopies, and there's a golf course. Oh, yeah. Right across. Sea yeah. Line Highway. Yeah. Well, I mean, the channel's right there where everybody fishes. That's and right. And we went out there, there was a boat right there in the channel fishing. Yeah. yeah. And we're walking through there with camera equipment. Yeah. And what did the guy say? He asked what we was doing, and I think we told him. Snails. We told we were, snails. We were talking, yeah. yeah, we were doing a study on the snails. Yeah. That, they are quiet because they don't want to be around us. I mean. And you don't even hear babies. You don't hear babies. You don't. I mean, I've spent enough time. question I had. Don't, don't babies cry? No. They don't. In fact, they don't make a damn peep. And when they talk, they're even quieter. I mean, they're so quiet. Now, granted, I couldn't hear anything because everything was moving. All the leaves and everything were moving, and I'm still hearing little crackling noises to my left. But they have, they could whisper really low. Well, when we first started doing this and we were going to research, you know, and then we decided we weren't going to research, we were, we were going to do this, talk to other people right. that actually research, I heard them talking right they, i heard him and now, it was, it, there wasn't a whisper i mean it was conversation was two voices yeah. probably 50 feet away and it was one deep and then <laughs> you know you don't understand what they're right. saying but right. it's just like you freeze like, you've got to be kidding me are you serious and then you get home and then you review the film and then there they are right there you know faces poking through the bushes looking at you mm. that, now here's a few of the images that I captured when I was doing some research with Mark and Melanie Zasky from Crypto Reality. And I didn't even know I was filming this guy. But you can see that little troll doll there. That's about 30 feet away. Um, that's Melanie filming back toward Mark and I. Yeah, creepy looking. Now this one, this is the next day in almost the exact same spot. We were walking down the levee and decided we were going to turn and try to catch see if that little gray faced guy was still there and uh, that's why you see it's in the corner of the frame because we were filming over to the right but i guess when we walked by this guy just laid out to watch us and didn't think we were going to turn around and stop so i think he just closed his eyes and looks like he's praying oh no they stopped don't look over here don't look over here Oh, please don't look over here. <laughs> now, this guy never looked. I just heard something behind me. And that's, an, again, about 20, 25 feet away. And I just spun the camera around. I didn't turn my head. I spun the camera around, and there's this little thing. Yeah, that's a little guy just sitting there watching this. And there's another one behind him, but you can't see him very well. He was moving around back there in the video. Now, it wasn't long after seeing these things that I decided that uh, researching just wasn't for me, that uh, I would just talk to the people that do research. Yeah. So, for um, whatever reason, you can't see while you're there. Yeah, and I remember you saying that uh, when you were uh, out in the woods, um, you heard things that you just put off as. Oh yeah, oh, all kinds of right. stuff, man. The owl, that sounds like, right. uh, an owl don't sound right. You know, something wrong with this guy. And then a fox yip. Mm. That sounded they like. They screamed loud too. Yeah, but it sounded like somebody trying to mimic the right. fox yip. You know, and I was camping out by myself, mm. you know, and where I camp out. And I mean, I think about it today, it just creeps me out that I'm but sure why? they were. They didn't I'm sure they, they, they didn't. You're right. They didn't. But I'm sure they were there watching. In your in your in your toughest encounter, you did. And you yeah, hurt you. Right. And he could have yeah, done anything he wanted. I mean, he had you right there. Yeah. But you talk about mimic. I mean, we mimic. We go turkey hunting. We call up the turkeys with their turkey collars, whether it's the handhelds or the mouthpieces. Yeah, I mean, sure. We do the snorts and the, and the chalks for the deer. I mean, so yeah. we have a lot of things that we mimic to get our prey in so we can hunt them. Well, no doubt there's so a purpose for it. Absolutely. I mean, there's a purpose. But themselves. you can, it, it's not perfect, mm -hmm. you know. 
And if you're really paying attention and you actually are aware, you know what's out there around you, and you hear that, you can you can say, yeah, that's uh, that's probably one of these one of these guys trying to either fool us or talk to each other or whatever they're doing, why they're doing it, who knows? Mm -hmm. But I would say they invented the idea. I'm sure they well, did. One day when <laughs> I was in there, I heard like what I don't know what a baby deer sounds like. A goat. Okay, well mm -hmm. that's what I heard, but also pacing me through the bush. So like it now what what was going through my head is I don't know what they sound like so I can't say that sounded like right. somebody making that sound. But at ear level <laughs> I don't think I'd be hearing a baby deer. You know, they'd be very quiet if you walked in front of them, I mean. crying. Making that like it's looking for its mom. And I thought either something's making that noise at either level, and it wasn't far. I'm talking about 20 feet, but we're talking dense. We're talking the really dense bush in there, and I could show you where it is. Uh, I said either something's making that noise or something's carrying a baby trying to get the mother to come. Well, what deer, it's kind of a locator thing, but it's normally a female to female or this is, the bucks don't really do it that much. But they will, they will constantly do it. They'll do that, bad, and then. But it sounded like it was crying in like fear. That's what it, in. That's what it seemed like. So, I, but I mean, I'm not sure because I. But if you said it's short little bursts like that, that's, that's just one of the things they do. It's mm -hmm. kind of a locator thing, and then you'll, you know, you'll hear the other one. Mm -hmm. You know, bad, bay back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a mother. But if you, the best way when I hunted. I, I could call up a doe every time. I had a a buck grunt, and I would just take the the rubber band on the reed and move it all the way up to where it was high pitch, and just blow on it, like wah wah wah, and they would does would come running. I mean, exactly. They think it's a baby, and I guess that's what they think that and it's a baby. That's what it sounded like. That's what it sounded like. Yes, that's exactly it, what it sounded like. It might have been that, it, but at ear level. So like, I mean, in the in the but even though it's bush, you can still tell what's on the ground. You can sounds from the ground to sounds that are right at your ear. You can still tell, and especially where 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 I was, I'm like, you know, that doesn't sound right. That, that's weird because it's up here. It's like it's in my ear. It's not like like on the ground. Yeah. Right. And I would hear it walking. I mean, twenty feet. It's, we're talking like 20 feet. I would hear it walking if it was pacing me and making this noise. So something very silent was actually making this noise or had a baby in its arm, letting it cry out to mama so mama could come and he could. Uh, maybe. I mean, I, that just went through my head. I, I, didn't right. know what, I didn't know what could be making this noise and, and how it could be making noise at this height, you know. Well, normally, you know, if a baby's not in trouble, they're not gonna do that. They're gonna do the locator thing, mm -hmm. normally. This sounded more like emergency. If, like if, if something's got a hold of one, yeah. that's when they're going to be. You know, coyotes have it. That's when it's going to be going nuts like that. And you're, that's you. You think you would know? You'd be able to hear leaves rustling and all that, and, and not just walking. Yeah. You know, along beside you. Yeah, making but I didn't noise. even hear walking. But it sounds like a, not. I mean, it's a good idea, really. I mean, you think about an ambush predator, and mm -hmm. all they have to do is get mama in to pass by one of the other ones. And, yeah. So you didn't hear walking, but you could hear the sound. Yeah, with pacing. Me. And I'm like, this is strange. This is the weirdest thing I've ever was. I said, it can't be, because you would hear walking. I mean, you see seen the underbrush. I mean, there's crap yeah. on every part of the ground there. There's so things that these are slick, though. They, they move so quietly through there. Hmm. I just, hmm. I don't know why. I mean, they're feeder pattern or whatever. I mean, we have all kind of theories, I know. We're not going to sit here and say, we're not going to say this is what they do. Right, I can yeah. tell you what deer do is I hunted deer for 30 years. You know, for the most part, I, I can tell you what they're doing and why they're doing it. But, you know, you're talking about this deer are not really self aware. Mm. You know, it's, and I'm not saying that anything that Sasquatch does isn't all about survival. But for a deer, that's definitely what it is. Oh, yeah. You know, instinct. Like any other wild animal, away from us, mm -hmm. you know. So, what other little memorable 
experiences have you had out there in your your area? Well, the um, the first day was like the the craziest. I mean, the first place I woke up to was like it was insane. This is where it all started. The first day I'm walking along and I see this tree fall. I noticed it had been cut down, but I wanted to see if anything was digging in it for grubs. So I started saying that as I was coming over here out loud, so just in case anything was in here, it would hear me and I wouldn't surprise it. And being that it was pretty breezy, uh, you know, my neck was, my head was on a swivel. So I'm looking around because I'm hearing noises everywhere and I start smelling skunk coming from this way. So right where that stick is sticking out right here is where a juvenile stuck his head out. Now these have been moved ever since and they're also decaying but his head stuck out right in there and he couldn't go back because I had looked because I'm looking all around at first but I, I'm, the camera's pointing this way and he peeks his head out so when I look they freeze when you look so right. he didn't put his head back under so I notice I'm catching him the moment I'm, I'm catching him it's a juvenile now I smell really bad smell of skunk and feet now this is the original video uh, the first time Richard went in and this is gonna show you can see that same log pile right there which things have changed a little when you look at that spot where he was pointing earlier I'll highlight it right there you see there's nothing there now but Richard's gonna come up he's gonna walk up and he's gonna turn his head and when he looks back there he is now that is clearly a face you can see the, the brow ridge, deep set eyes, lips, and then there's the next frame. It's actually a little clearer. Now that's a little guy, and he's got to be laying down in those ferns. There's the next frame, even, wow, look at those eyes. Now is that not creepy? I mean, aside from that, a testament to just how well these things can hide from us. Now the camera's gonna start moving again, and he's gonna come back to it, but it's, the, the camera's still moving, and that was the clearest frame I could get through the movement, but you can still see and he's actually turned and moved a little bit more. And that's a pretty good catch for his first time out there. Yeah, so this is where it all started. This is the first day, and I was somewhat surrounded because I was pretty much in here, like right here. This is where I was semi-surrounded. The, the skunk smell, everything, everything that people have uh, from uh, I, as long as I've been hearing about um, at least the Florida part of it. I mean, I've heard, you know, how they smell in other places like horrible smells, but that smell always gets to me. Uh, when I smell that, I know it's it's go time. It's, what does it smell like? It smells like skunk. It really? smells like not like a skunk just sprayed, but like something ate a skunk or something smells almost like a skunk but it's very close to skunk. Because I know what I've smelled out here mm -hmm. in this in this area, not your area, but over in the, what it smell the like? JC area, is it smell like stale urine and mm. strong musk, like B.O. but not B.O., you know? Yeah, I smelled feet before. So when you <laughs> smell feet in outside, and you know you just took a shower and you come out. There's something out there, and that's why I, I call this one stinky. He's like right. very gorilla-ish, gorilla-esque, <coughs> and uh, he he smells he smells like feet and skunk, and that's and they're both competing smells with each other. Like he's like I'm gonna make sure my feet stink to outweigh the smell of the skunk because it's bad. And when you, smell skunk, when you smell feet outside, that's something, man. That's really, that's some stinky feet. Now you talk about him looking gorilla -ish. Yes. They all look different. Yeah, they do. I know there's they one, do. the, uh, I call him the Hulk, just because his face is green. And they all seem to have, the features are the same, 
the deep set eyes, heavy brow ridge, you know, that hominid look, you know, prognathus mm -hmm. mouth, long upper lip, but that nose is up here, almost between the eyes, on, all, on almost all of them, you see that, that nose is, is still hooded. Yep, but know, it's like up there. Us, but it's, it's more raised up, it's not, you know, long bridge like we have. But I have one where I was shooting the juvenile, I mean, there used to be hallways since the hurricane. I mean, it just tore up the, the I would call it the facade of the bush, all the doorways that used to be. It was just like, oh, this is right. where he is. Well, I noticed in some of your, your film that you can see foliage up close. Mm -hmm. And that's for just from you putting your camera over in the bush, mm -hmm. right, like that. So some of the, I know some of the pictures you have, you didn't see them. Because you're back here and you're and I'm here yeah. and you put the camera over in and that's right. Yeah, and that's sent to me as some of the best ones. Uh, the one I call um, Alice Cooper. Oh yeah, that thing creeps me out, man. Now this is the one that I call Alice Cooper, and it's for obvious reasons. Uh, if you can see him there, it's just center left of the screen, face, gray face, dark eyes, and that long upper lip and that nose it's a little bit longer actually than some of the others but again you know these things all look different you know just like you and I look different these things look different from one another and just in case you can't see them that's one of the creepiest things I've ever seen imagine running into this guy in the woods this is not a little guy that's 15 feet back there and you can see all the foliage up close where the camera is that's a big boy and an awesome shot he's he's probably about a good seven feet devilish looking yeah he's he's wicked looking but that what happened was i'm coming around uh a dead bush and then a branch that was sticking out with leaves on it and as i came around i'm looking i'm like normally i could see out the back of this bush to the swamp. Right. Now, I'm thinking a lot of times there's clouds in the west and the sun will drop behind the clouds and then it'll be a little dark back there, but I'm not seeing anything past here. What the hell is going on? I know where I am. And I'm like maybe from 17 feet at the most from these guys. like. Right there. Well, I know in the video, you just see this guy materialize. It's just like he just... Yeah, and there he is. And plain as day, you see the whites in his eyes. You yeah, know, it's, yeah. It's, that Alice Cooper. Yeah, that's I, crazy. Since that, since that, I, yeah, I don't. I, I just don't. I don't know how anyone could see that and not wonder. You've either you've either gotten really good at CGI, <laughs> or you got some guys out there in masks. It's, it's, or it's real. It's one of those. You know, it's not. I, I don't know. Like you hear pareidolia a lot. And I mean, I understand pareidolia is a real thing. Mm -hmm. It but is. But you can see the symmetry here in these oh, yeah. guys. It's you can see the little guy peeking over the cabbage palm leaf, and you can see uh, Alice Cooper right next to him. What is difficult to see are the ones in the backdrop. But you can see them, but right. people won't notice them. It has to be scary. Um, I mean, I, 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 I know that feeling. You know, when you, when you, even though you know what's out there, you know, when you see it. Yeah, I don't. I don't get afraid of them when I see. It. Like, okay, um, I, I wasn't afraid. What, I, what happens is I'm usually afraid after when I get home and when I watch the videos <laughs> and don't and see the ones I didn't see on the video. That's what scares me. It's like this one could have just killed me right here. There's a female standing right. When I when I got when I when I went in one time I went in about eighth of a mile through the dense bush and I'm talking. You heard every step is a hurdle. So each leg has to do this for like an eighth of a mile. And you're going, oh, maybe 16th of a mile, I don't know, but it's it's a long way to try to get through these briars and everything. So once I get to where I know they are, they're there, they're right behind this end of this dense crap, and then there's a little um, space, and then uh, the swamp. And I say, I know they're right there, they are right there so I go up and then one sticks his face out boom and they never do that they never stick their face out for nothing 
they in the darkness they are peeking out I've brightened snapshots that I've taken you know with that snapshot thing right. to try to get out in one piece I've brightened that and seen them just peeking they never stick their face off so they must have all been right there just like not the whole tribe but that clan was all right there and he's like you're not going anywhere else this this is the end of the line for you you gotta no more so he's, his face is sticking out and again maybe 15 feet right where my telescope is you know so I'm like okay and I know they understand pointing so I said okay I'm gonna go you know I point <laughs> behind me and I turn around and I put my back to him I take off my backpack because I, I can't outrun him so what's the difference whether I see him coming to kill me or I don't see him coming to, probably best not to see him if he's gonna kill me <laughs> so I take my backpack off I, I squat down I'm taking out the Tupperware here you go all right look um I took out one uh, no, I didn't have Tupperware. I just had oranges and apples. So I had bags of, uh, of apples and then I had um, the seedless oranges and I'm putting them out there. I said, okay guys, see, then I started. But as I'm doing that, as I see him put his face over here, I hear. <laughs> so I know, because as I turn this way, I'm looking and I'm like, oh, okay, there's a whole bunch of them right here in the bush right there. A female holding a baby, a male sticking his head out sideways. I'm like, all right, I'm surrounded. And then I hear, ksh, ksh, he hands you. like at my seven o'clock. So I'm like. And you go back. Yeah, and I just, just trooped out. I just trooped out. I didn't even bother looking left. But I mean, right. you keep going back out there. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. You just. Yeah. I mean, well, look, if they haven't killed me from the first day, from the first day I was surrounded. I was surrounded the first day, not all the way around, but from here, that way. And, you know, there's no way of getting away from them. No way. You would never get away from them. Two steps, they got you. Maybe three. And they're coming from the dense bush. You could run in the open field. They'll get you in three steps, probably. Oh, I'm sure they would. But now you've never had anything like real aggressive. Nothing at all aggressive, except the smacking down of the leaves. The smacking and the pacing you out. Yeah, and uh, well, one got upset when I shined the light when I was talking to Carol. Right, but, that's it. Yeah, but I don't even consider that aggressive. I think he was just trying to get away. Because maybe, I'm thinking maybe it thought, and I'm saying he, maybe he thought um, that it was two of us and we mm -hmm. were coming in with a flashlight. That's that's was my thinking of why he bust through the because he didn't have to do that. I mean, he could have just chilled and you know, or he could have went that way, right? You know, deeper into the bush. Because I'm in research area one. Research area one is where the one stuck his face out. That goes pretty far back. That goes pretty far back, and you know, I'll show you when we go there. That 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 bush. Some of the bushes very narrow. Maybe the, the width of this room. But then some go deeper back right. in certain areas, certain spots. And, though, and um, there are some that I won't even go in. I won't go in there. I don't know why, but something tells me not to go in there. I don't know what it is. Trust your instinct. Yeah. 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 And, 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 but it goes back, and I know they're in there. There's no question about it. And there were doorways. There used to be doorways. doorways well, it's doorways. open everywhere else, so it's not like they have anywhere else to go. They do. Because you know, right to. past the swamp, there's woods. Yeah, because when we went out there that day, the, the channel's here, then you have the levee, then the drop off to the research areas, mm -hmm. which, and he's right, because I remember some of it being. It's open on the other side. And then some deeper, but then there's an open field area, but then there's woods. Yep. I remember that when we drove off, and it's thick back in that area. So they and that go. goes on and on. They have so they can, think they yep. just hang out up there to watch us? I think they live there. That's where they live because there's good good eating there probably in that that in the um, in the canal and then the swamp because I looked down here and I saw a dark patch and I know when I see a dark patch they're a different color than everything in the whole bush there's white trees green bush there's nothing else so I knew they were in there so I'm filming I'm shooting video of the that little dark area so I said, now these next few pics are the results of Richard filming in those dark spots. Now I'm not going to highlight this guy, he's, he's really easy to see, he's right there in the center of the frame. He's got a little gangster lean going on. This is, um, this is I think Linda's favorite, I mean you can still see that dark gray face. 
human looking face and his whole outline. He's just sitting right there watching Richard. Now, this one wasn't great. There's, he has a lot that are like this, but what I liked about this one is you can see the whites in this thing's eyes. You see that nose, that distinctive nose, and then the whites in those eyes. Now this one, this particular frame, he couldn't find without the red circle, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, there's, there's no doubt what that is. That's that distinctive gray face, that conical head. You can even see the shoulder, a little bit of the neck. Now you're never gonna hear me say, this is male, this is female, but this just looks female to me. And it's that distinctive, it's that, that nose shoved right up there between the eyes. That's a great shot. He, because I know they freeze when they see you. They just stop moving, and I'm like, because, and I use that to my benefit. You know, I'll I'll look away when I'm filming, so this way, if they decide to duck or peek out, you know, right. on video, you're not seeing it, but you might see right. it. You can't tell the right, right. If I see them there, I'll go, like, oh, okay, yeah, what's over there? Hmm. And then <laughs> let them move and do whatever they have to do while they're being videoed. And then I have had one thing that. You've made this comment before. You don't understand why people go hunting them. Right. And right. I, I think it's very interesting. Yeah, I think it's very interesting what you say. I'm glad so you I want to hear, hear what you mean by you don't understand why people. Yeah, go people them. go looking for them, which is that's the worst thing to do. These things they back off. They even back off if you're by yourself. So. What makes you think you're gonna find them by looking for them? Okay, you may find a structure there, and if you can continue to look and look and look for them, it, you're not gonna find them because that's what they do. They see you before you see them, and then they back off. And they're more hidden, more stealthy, more more uh, environment intelligent than you are. Mm -hmm. To their environment, that's their home. So they know everything about this place. You know nothing. Even if you've been here a million times, you don't live there. Mm -hmm. So. I think of it in this way. Why look for them? They want to see you probably as bad as you want to see them. Why not just hang out, set some cameras up, face away from where the cameras are facing, and just have a good time. Listen to the radio, cook out, chill, have your friends on the phone have talking. Them, have them come to you. And have them come and look at you. Which, like I told you before, makes somewhat makes sense because you have these people camping and they'll say hey you know we were camping the night sitting around the fire and then all of a sudden this is going yeah. on and they don't even care about sasquatch they, they just happen to get right. caught up in the well i mean obviously yeah. from what you've caught on film and i mean you've gotten to a point where they just don't run away from you anymore right right well I, because I, I go in talking i do not want to scare them uh, i don't want to surprise them either and i mean you're a hunter what, what happens when you surprise an animal yeah it's not you good. know even a deer i mean it's Gentle as we think deers, oh look at the cute deer, but they'll kill you if you, if sure. you surprise them and they get scared and they start kicking you. It's a you know, I can't imagine something that's like probably five times stronger than a chimp. Fight or flight is in all of us, Absolutely. right? Animals, humans, if they're not running away, they're fighting for their life. We want to thank Richard for having us back down to West Palm Beach and refilming everything we had already filmed once. Yeah, he was such a trooper through the whole thing. Uh, a real host, you know, and it was nice to meet Dawn Marie. You know, he, she's uh, exactly what Richard needs. Just keep him lined out. But Richard, we appreciate everything you do. Keep doing it. Keep getting those great shots, man. And hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to make another show with you. But we certainly do appreciate everything you do. Well... Back from Florida. Did you have a good trip? I did. I had a great time. It was pretty good. Uh-huh. I love Florida. Other than it could have been at the beach, but... <laughs> but I did. I love Florida. We were kind of, we were kind of in the dirt. So oh, in the mud. mud. A lot of it. They've had a lot of rain and water, so we, we uh, got our share of mud. Yeah, we were in the mud a lot. But, uh, you know, we didn't get uh, everything we had planned on. We didn't get to do. Of course, plans change. You know, we went, uh, we shot with uh, Al and Elisa Lugo in Maipa State Park. And we have a lot of stuff that we still have to, to go through. 
before we get that show out. And uh, we had planned on Andrew Carter, and as a possibility, uh, Albert Burlingame and his girlfriend in Brooksville. Right. They have uh, they have a lot of activity around there. We just we didn't have the time. We uh, the two main ones we wanted to do. We actually got to do uh, last day. We shot over to West Palm Beach, met with uh, our good buddy Richard Borchart, and I mean you see you see what he had. I mean it's uh, that's, it's some of the best stuff I've ever seen. I mean if you don't have to strain. To see it, and that wasn't even all of it. Yeah, that God, was just that was just the best that that I knew that the lay person could could see without you know you having to point out too much. And uh, I know some people probably noticed that uh, I used a few more effects in in this one than I have before, but that's just me learning the editing program. <laughs> I probably should have used some of those in the other episodes, but uh, it's a progression. You know, it's just four shows out, and they're just going to get better and better. Of course, now we have Scott. Yeah, right. We have Scott Owens, our field producer, and I mean, this just it's what he does. You know, aside from making maps, he uh, he's he's got the equipment. And oh, speaking of equipment, yes, we have a new tool. He has a new toy. It's a tool. It's going to be good for the show. We bought a drone from Al. From Al, uh, he had two. He had the Phantom Four Pro, and he had a little Maverick. And he said he liked the Maverick better because it was quieter. And I'm telling you, Al, that Phantom Four is it's, uh, it's just as quiet as that. <laughs> now, I think he even said that to me later. He said, "Man, I think I sold you the wrong drone." <laughs> He's a trail. <laughs> but the thing was brand new, four batteries, and we. It's going to be good. So you're going to get to see. Uh, that are elevating our production value with the drone in, in future shows. But uh, we had a really excellent time in Florida. Richard Borchart, not gonna meet a nicer guy. Him and Don Marie. Don Marie, his girlfriend, just two wonderful people. Now, no, he, he got her, her out to research, I think, once. Once. <laughs> and she won't go back with him. And I mean, I, I don't blame you. Don she told him real quick, she's not from the country. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's not either, but... No, he's not, but, but he's she wasn't done, going back. What he's done and what he's gotten. And he just does not care about notoriety. He doesn't care about proving anything to anybody. And a lot of the stuff he just... Some of the stuff he puts on Facebook sometimes, every now and then. But the really good stuff that I went through and saw... Yes, I mean, so much. to me, some of the stuff he talks about, of course, he's there yeah. and he sees some of these things. But, you know, you get camera movement and interlace and it gets a little bit blurry. Some of the stuff that he's that his favorite stuff is a little bit blurry. I mean, you can still see it, but we that's some of the stuff that we didn't put, you know, in this show. And I think we put plenty of stuff in there that uh, there's just no doubt what's in them, in my mind. I mean, it, people can doubt it all they want. And before anybody comments about game cameras, let me shut this down now. Because <laughs> it's been every yeah episode. the last two the last two episodes have been a lot of game. You know why didn't they put out game cameras? You know if you if you know anything about these things and the subject, you just you can't think on human terms as far as Sasquatch is concerned. Game cameras just do not work. If anything, it, it will keep them away. He's just not gonna catch them on the game camera. Mm -hmm. So, and like Richard said, if you put anything up to your face, they're hiding. So it's almost like they know for whatever reason that that's something that shouldn't be there. They're not gonna come around it. They're not gonna get near it. So I wanna answer that question now, why the game cameras are not out. It's almost a waste of time. Well, and there's been people who have said they've tried to use them and bought four and five, and four and five end up on the ground, busted up. I mean, so when right. they do get around them, they, they tear them up, and you now don't if you have look, anything. If you look and you research, there is some pretty good stuff that have been caught on game camp. I mean, some of the, one of the best audio I ever heard was from a game camera, and, and you can hear the thing walk up to it from behind, tap on it, 
I mean, they know it's not, it's their house. They know it's not supposed to be there. But then, you know, like that one, they, then you got people saying, oh, that's just a person walking up behind it and tapping on it. You right. Know? So well, I mean, you can you say that about a lot of You things. can't do any proof by that. So. You, you could say that Richard has a bunch of guys out there in masks. <laughs> I mean, you can say that. I promise you don't, because I've walked through that stuff. There's <laughs> nobody in their right mind laying in that stuff, because you got to worry about gators and panthers and hogs. Uh, and so. somebody like Richard shooting you. Or yes, because he, he, he has his gun with him, and he's, like he says, it's mostly for the gators and the panthers, you know, but he's not going to go. And he goes by himself. I'm amazed about that. He goes right by himself. The yeah, guy's fearless. Yeah. And funny. Oh, my God, he's so funny. He's a funny guy. He is so funny. So. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he's, that's that New York City dry type of humor. You know, he's not going to laugh at his own joke, but he's going to watch you laugh at it. <clears throat> With that facial expression. <laughs> he has a facial expression, so. But it was a very good trip. With I mean, love meeting everybody. Everybody was wonderful. Yes. Had a lot of hiking we done. A lot of driving. So... We knocked it out, though. Yeah, got it done. It was, uh, but it was an excursion, and we have some excursions coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm gonna go ahead and fill them in on this. Carrie uh, finally went out Tuesday, and uh, yeah, Tuesday, and talked to the man on the property that Carrie's encounter happened on has passed away, but his son owns all of it now and Kerry did go out Tuesday and of course it's the first time he's been there a long time so a lot of things are overgrown a little bit more and he was a little apprehensive but then immediately the family remembered him they sat down and talked to him so we're going back tomorrow with some friends and we're going out there and going to the area where the encounter happened so yeah that's actually going to be the next episode it's going to be my encounter it's going to be my personal Bigfoot Odyssey and uh, how, why we do this, how all this got started and where it all began. So uh, I think it's going to be just having permission, knowing that they know we're going to be out there and actually he is going to do an on-camera interview and um, corroborate a lot of the things that, uh, that you're going to hear in it. I won't give away too much here. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, it's going to be, plus we're going to have the drone. Uh, I think the production value is going to shoot way up on the next one. Just, uh, you know, having having Scott and all the equipment he has. And um, not sure who's going to conduct the interview just yet. Uh, thought it might be Doug Randall. Uh, could be could be Scott. I don't know. Might even be you. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's not going to be her. I am, I, tomorrow will be a, a challenge for me because tomorrow it's going to be, it's not out seeing what other people, it's going to be, you know, this is my husband. This is where stuff happened to him. This is where stuff changed him. So I'm going to probably be a little bit different tomorrow. Well, I'm really glad you're going to be there. I would not I'm let sorry. you go without me. <laughs> so, and I will have my good. So... And after that, we have planned for Oklahoma. I'm excited. <laughs> DDoS, the Bigfoot Dogman Research Project. I mean, I'm on the phone with him daily, you know, working out. Uh, we're going to get to a point now that we have the Florida trip behind us. We're going to start focusing more on that. And uh, also, D. Sims, uh, Lady in the Woods. She's also in o Oklahoma. And she told me... Not to call her an expert. Not to call her an expert. But she's as close to one as you're going to find on habituating. She's been habituating with the clan of these things for a long time. She knows a lot. If anybody asks me a question about habituation, I point them in her direction usually. So um, we're going to shoot an episode with her, and we're going to shoot our episode with D. D. Doss. He's got so much stuff. I, I think we're probably going to be able to make a two-part episode. What we might do is a Bigfoot episode and a Dogman episode. And hopefully we can get make the Dogman episode a special and maybe get it out around Halloween or something. I don't know. We're going to try. We're going to try. We are going to try. But this, is, um, this stuff's not easy to do, the show, the way we do it. Uh, that's why there's so much distance in between shows. And we've said that before. We want to try to 
shorten up that gap. But I mean, the way we work and we, we want to get them closer together and eventually we will. Um, we just have to get there. Well, you know? and, and with us being able to shoot two at one time, that's, that's then, the key. then we can put out, he can go ahead and edit them down and then we hook one up while he's at work and yeah. then you won't have that too much. That's just like my episode. It's not going to be two months before it comes out. We're shooting it tomorrow, and hopefully I'll have it edited and waiting in the queue, you know, put it out in a few weeks um, after Richard's episode is out for a while. And, uh, you know, we, we don't put commercials in current episodes. Now, once the new episode comes out, we'll put commercials in the old episode just because YouTube makes money off of you putting commercials in your stuff. So if you put commercials in it, they help promote you. So it actually gets continuous views that way. And that's what we're trying to do. We're mm -hmm. trying to we're trying to push awareness. Because when we talked about it, <clears throat> you know, is that what we're going to try to do? We're not going to research. We're going to talk to people that do research. So are we going to try to educate people? Well, that's a thin prospect because we would have to educate ourselves first. You know, we just, we don't know much <laughs> so in the process of us going to other people and learning we're hopefully pushing awareness more than anything because awareness is a 50 50 prospect you're either aware or you're not so and then that's what we're trying to do mm -hmm. is let people know just exactly what's out there that this is not just a bunch of hicks running around in the woods yelling and knocking on trees you know those uh those guys with that tv show that we're trying to find Bigfoot, you know, I think they set us back quite a bit. So, uh, not that we're trying to repair any of those things, but we just, we want to do this a little bit differently. We just want people to see how other people do this and that they actually are getting some really good evidence, whether they're showing it to the world or not, they're getting it. And then hopefully they'll, they'll let us show it to the world mm -hmm. like Richard did. Yes. And thank you, Richard. Yes. Thank you, Richard, very much. We really enjoyed shooting with you. Uh, enjoyed meeting your girlfriend, finally. Um, Cause I've known Richard for a couple of years. Yeah, and, and but I never met I never met Dawn Marie. So and she's a, she's an angel. She's yeah. a sweetheart. And this is what he needs. <coughs> <coughs> Poor Richard. Right. What else do we have? Um, I think that's it. Just getting prepared for tomorrow now. At this point. What about the eight shirts? Don't. <laughs> That's what Linda calls the Under Armour. Uh, Everybody thinks we're pushing Under Armour, that are that I'm pushing Under Armour anyway, because you see us wear a lot of it, and it's not that. I don't even buy a lot of this stuff. It's given to me as gifts. You know, well, what, what, can, I, what can we get off of Carrie? Well, let's get him Under Armour. He's always wearing Under Armour. And well, I because us y'all are always buying me Under Armour. <laughs> <laughs> I don't never look to see what he has on when I throw something on it. So we're this we're is doing this is a Green Day shirt. <laughs> this is not Under Armour, so I have my Under Armour hat on. And they they look like H's because I can't never remember the <laughs> name of them because I have one shirt that's that way. So well, I have a lot. Yes. So and uh, no, but we don't. Uh, we're not funded by Under Armour. <laughs> if anybody wants to ask, the eight shirts, so, by, uh, the eight shirts, yeah. So, was that it? I think so. I think so, I too. I think so. Well, we had a good trip. Had a good time. Looking forward to the next. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We're looking forward to tomorrow. So, for Richard Borchart, my beautiful wife, I'm Carrie Arnold. Hope to see you guys on the next Bigfoot Odyssey. Night, y'all. Hey, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to mash that notifications bell. You'll be the first to know when the next Bigfoot Odyssey is out.